Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living Podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts and ideas validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living and to my new mini-series Quantum Chat, where in each episode, together with my special and returning guest, Maren Muter, we will focus on just one topic, one burning question, one quantum mystery that probably everyone has a view on, but no real answer as we can only speculate and guess, which is fun. (laughs) Hello, Maren. It's good to have you back on my show. Thanks for joining me in this special series of Quantum Chat. Hi, Anna. I can hardly wait to hear what tonight's question is, or this evening's question is, or morning, wherever you are. (laughs) I can hardly wait to hear the question. (laughs) Okay, here it comes. Today's question is, what is time? What is time? Mm. So how much time do we have to talk about time? (laughs) Not very much. (laughs) So we need to be quick. A time is one big twisted paradox pretzel, in my view. I have, in fact, written an article, A Matter of Time, in my blog on my podcast website, in which I said, we don't really know what time is, yet we cannot live without it. It affects every aspect of our life, it is everywhere, and yet it is only here and now. The paradox of time is that it does and does not exist at the same time. (laughs) A mind twisting, twisting really. A typical quantum phenomenon. It is also the most precious commodity we have. More precious than money, gold or property. For one main reason. Unlike all other commodities, time can never be replaced or taken back. Once it's gone... It's gone. (laughs) We live in the matrix of time. We know when time is running out, passing by, or standing still. We spend time, waste time, lose time, save time, and even try to buy some time, some extra time when we don't have enough of it. So it appears to me that time is just an experience rather than the fourth dimension as some people propose and a very subjective at that. That's why we have clocks and watches, as we need a mechanism keeping track of time for us in this consensus reality. But then again, sometimes I feel that, and I don't think anyone has ever proposed this before, (laughs) time is actually, or maybe, a conscious energy with its own mind (laughs) Wow. (laughs) What do you think? Anna, you're (laughs) way out there. (laughs) Mm. No, I like your thinking. (laughs) I am way out there on the limb. (laughs) Okay. Um, My view on time. So my view on time coincides with us being on the third dimensional plane. On the third dimensional plane, we actually can only see two dimension. We don't get to see the third dimension because we are inside it. Now, time isn't a fourth dimension. It's actually another tool here on the third dimension. It enables us to move around this environment. Without time, we would not be able to walk around a tree to see the far side. Without time in that apple that we were talking about before where I held up the apple, we would not be able to turn the apple around to see the other side. So time is actually a measurement. It's like a ruler. 
And a very interesting thing is we have several types of time. One, we have a common time, just like we have a common reality. And this time kind of ticks away, da, 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 and we kind of move off of that. So 10.30 is 10.30 in certain parts of the world, and then it's another time, another time. Mm-hmm. But we can, just like we can hold our breath and slow our breathing down, or we can hyperventilate and speed our breathing up and we can slow our heart down and we can speed our heart up or we can just kind of have it where it is. We can do the same thing with time. We can slow time, we can speed up time, and we can participate in the common time. So why does this happen? Why would our time change to an individual time? It allows our body to brace it allows our body to prepare. Remember, and I keep going back because it's important to remember that our body is a functional tool and we have to use the tool wisely or the tool breaks. So if we are, let's say, in a traumatic event, many times you hear people say it was like slow motion until the very end and then it sped up. But Or if it just stayed slow motion the whole time. And what's, what's happening is our body is preparing for impact. It doesn't mean a car accident, but it's bracing. So let's say that we had a death that we weren't expecting and we didn't, and our body wasn't, our heart wasn't ready to hear it because it has so much energy, so much power in this event that if we allow all that energy or all that power to come in instantly, it would be like being hit by a car and our body could literally shut down. So by having individual time, it allows that information to seep in at a rate that we can handle it. It doesn't take the pain away. Mm. It doesn't take the impact away. It just slows the impact down. Mm. On another side is time can slow down when we're learning new things. So when we're children, time feels like it is lingering. (laughs) Those summer days lasted forever. But that's not because we have a shorter amount of measurement time on the planet. It's because we are interacting with something new. All of these experiences are new laying in the grass and watching the clouds, noticing how the bumblebees are over the clover, or even listening to adults drone on and on and (laughs) on, even if it was only a a quick conversation. But that's because it's new to us. And then when we're older, we can still have these new to us experiences that allow those lingering days to reconvene. The opposite is the truth. We can have events that happen so quickly. So let's say that we weren't in the accident, but we watched an accident. And we saw it coming. We saw it coming. We saw it coming. We saw it coming. And it, for us, was so quick. It happened like a flash. And that's because our body was on the opposite side of preparation. So it had a different preparation that it needed. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's my view on time. <laughs> Thank you. I love, I'm loving it. And this actually reminds me that it was se- several years ago, I actually experienced that slow motion time. I was in a car accident, which wasn't very bad. And I remember this to this day. What was amazing at some point, I suddenly experienced this very slow motion. And I actually heard in my mind, you are going to have an accident now. And it was like, okay, I am ready for it. Even now when I'm saying this, I'm getting goosebumps. Obviously, it happened in a split of a second. But I had this like, ooh, we sometimes see in a movie, almost mm-hmm. like this, you know, this stretched reality, which took longer in our perception than it actually did. And I heard this voice speaking to me very calmly, you are going to have an accident now. And then boom, (laughs) it happened. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And that's your consciousness. Just tell that's your intuition. And that's just what your intuition sounds like 
is. when it speaks to you, it's just calm. It's not panicked. It just, because it's keeping you calm, it's helping you prepare for impact. Yes. And that's exactly what happened because I was like, okay, like this is predestined or, or I'm ready. And I was very calm, mm -hmm. which afterwards I found very bizarre to even think that that was my emotional internal reaction. And then mm -hmm. which changed obviously after the actual accident. Yeah. Well, you know, because our time can be individual, just like we can learn how to hold our breath and we can learn how to regulate our heart to a point, we can actually learn how to regulate time even without traumatic or big events happening. We can literally slow our own time down or speed it up. So I've played with time quite a bit. But something I wanted to mention is when you had that intuition come in and was nice and calm and you were nice and calm, mm -hmm. that is the opposite to what happens when we panic. Panic makes everything worse and it increases the volume and it increases the noise of the environment around you. So you cannot hear that connection that is always there. It never goes away. It just needs calm or, you know, to be in a, yeah, I guess calm mindset <laughs> or body set in order for it to, to come through as strong as it did for you. But panicking does the opposite effect. It turns everything up yeah. and not only makes the situation worse for you, but it makes the situation worse for everyone else when we have people just panicking and, you know, you can't get through to them. So that's when yeah. you have to take a nice big breath and... Yeah, lovely. One final sub-question, <laughs> if, I, if I may, we still have a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have noticed... <laughs> in my own personal experience. So I guess we're talking about this personal time. But also, I've heard this from many people saying the same thing. So that's a collective experience, which is that especially in the past few years, or maybe even several years, that time is speeding up. And that is a perception or experience, not just of older people, because we say, you know, usually when, as we get older or being adults, our perception of time is different. But also I've heard it from young people that people somehow feel that time is speeding up. Mm -hmm. What is your view on that? Well, first, I think it is a phenomenal example that time is relative to your individual experience and the collective experience. This is why it doesn't get faster as we age because everyone is experiencing this now. The reason why we're experiencing it now, what I believe in a very short, <laughs> so I'll only give one, one, <laughs> one reason, but there's several, is that we are mm -hmm. changing. The human is changing. The environment is changing. Yeah. And it's not because we're becoming more awakened or anything like that. We are actually shifting and we are entering and will be entering a phase where the human population is going to be reduced. And it's going to be reduced because it is no longer relevant. Wow. And when we, and so side note. That's a big statement. At, yeah. <laughs> let's look at relevancy. So Anna, write it down because this is a very interesting topic that we can try to do in 15 minutes for another episode. For, for the in another yeah. conversation. Yes, but, absolutely. But society, ah. the human population is getting ready for a massive change and a massive shift. We are embarking oh. on a point of evolution right now. We are inside an evolutionary state, which we can talk about in another episode. Yes. But that's we why will. time feels like it's chaotic. It's not fast. It feels chaotic. Yes. Talking about cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay. So there you go. A brief explanation of time or at least some food for thought. Thank you, Marin. We'll see you in the next edition of Quantum Chat. Thank you, Anna. And everyone, please remember 
to give us your feedback and let us know what you think of this series. And if you have any questions, um, we would love to discuss them. You can do this by going to Anna's website in the show notes here. That's going to take you to the full show notes where her email address is located. Go ahead and send her an email from there. And I will talk to you next time on Quantum Chat. Thank you so much. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.